What's up everybody, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another question. So an open top box is made from a 20 centimeter by 28 centimeter piece of cardboard by cutting out equal squares from the corners and folding the flaps up. What must the dimensions of the squares be in between for the, fall, uh, for the volume of the box to be greater than 924 centimeters cubed? So we've done similar questions like this before, but this is actually gonna be an inequality question. So what's happening here? We have a 28 by 20 centimeter piece of cardboard. Then we're cutting out equal squares from each corner. So let's say that the dimensions of each of the squares is X, right? So we're gonna cut out these corners and then we're gonna be folding these sides up to create a box. So basically, the base of the box is gonna be this here. This side we're gonna fold up, this side will fold up, this side fold up, this side fold up. So what are the dimensions of this box gonna be now when we fold it up? Well, notice that the height of the box is gonna be this X, right? When we fold these sides up, so when we take just so you could see it a little better visually, right? When we take these sides and we fold them up, the height is just gonna be this X value. What is the width and the length gonna be? Well, notice that the length of the base is gonna be this right here. And the full length before we cut out these uh, sides or these corners was 28. So it's 28 minus, 2x. Both of these x values we are folding up. So this length here is going to be 28 minus 2x. And then same thing, this width here is going to be 20, which was this, minus both of these sides here that we are folding up. So that's going to be 20 minus 2x. Right? So those are going to be the expressions for the height, the width, and the length of this box that we are creating. And what we have to find is the dimensions of the squares, right? So those X values, what do they have to be in between for the volume of this box to be greater than 924? So the volume of this box is just basically length times width times height, right? Making sure that these expressions are in brackets. So I'm gonna put the height first. So X times the width, 20 minus two X times the length, 28 minus 2x. This volume has to be greater than 924. So usually, so far when they've been asking these volume questions, they say, what are the dimensions if the volume is equal to something? Here they're saying that the volume has to be greater than 924, right? So now this is just a polynomial inequality. So what we have to do, like usual, expand everything on the left side, then bring that 924 over, and then solve that polynomial uh, inequality by factoring. So when we foil these brackets out here, these two brackets, keeping that x outside, we end up getting 560 minus 96x plus 4x squared. Then bringing this x value in, we get 560x minus 96x squared plus 4x cubed has to be greater than 924. Then let's continue this up here. So I'm gonna rewrite this polynomial on the left side, but in order from highest degree to lowest degree. So we got 4x cubed minus 96x squared plus 560x. And then bringing this 924 over, that's minus 924 and we have to find out when is that greater than zero, right? Because there's not gonna be anything left on that right side. So at this point, what we have to do is we have to factor this polynomial on the left side. First thing you always wanna check, can you take anything out? Can't take out any constants because this 924 has no X attached to it, but notice we could take out a four from everything and that will make everything a lot easier for us in the future. So if we take out a four from everything, we'll have x cubed minus 24x squared plus 140x minus uh, 231. 
and that is greater than zero. So at this point, you wanna check, because this is a cubic function, can you potentially factor this by grouping? And if you try to do it by grouping, those two brackets won't be the same. So unfortunately, that's not gonna work. So what we have to do, we have to factor this by factor theorem. So what we can do is we could take this cubic function in the bracket, let's call it f of x, and we could test out a bunch of values. So f of one, f of negative one, and then try to get a value of zero somewhere. f of three, f of negative three, and actually, you don't even have to worry about testing the negatives like usual because these x values, if you remember, are dimensions of the squares that we cut out. And the dimensions can't be negative. So that's what's nice about these volume type of questions is that the inputs for x, if it's a volume question like this, you only have to test out the positive ones. So plugging in one for all the x's, that won't be zero. 2 for all the x's, that won't give us 0. But plugging in 3 for all the x's here in this polynomial in the bracket will equal 0. Meaning that x minus 3 is a factor of that cubic function. So we can break that cubic function down by taking it x cubed minus 24x squared plus 140x minus 231 and dividing it by x minus three. And when you do that long division, this is the result you'll get, x squared minus 21x plus 77 as the quotient. Got a remainder of zero, which makes sense because x minus three is a factor by the factor theorem. So what have we done? So we're basically taking this cubic function and we're breaking it down into x minus three and then that quotient x squared minus 21x plus 77. We have to find when is that greater than zero. Well, at this point, notice how we still have that quadratic left in the bracket. So we wanna see if we can factor that. And if you do try to factor that, unfortunately, it's not gonna factor smoothly. So what we have to do at this point is we have to throw that quadratic into the quadratic formula and find what the intercepts are going to be, right? So we'll have 21 plus or minus b squared, which would be negative 21 squared minus four times the a value of one times the c value of 77 all over two times that a value of one. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting an x value of 16.27 and an x value of 4.73. So taking these and relating it back to this inequality, basically what we can do at this point is we can graph this polynomial. So this is the expanded version and then this is the factored version. We can graph it and see when is it greater than zero? When is it above the x-axis? So we can get the x-intercepts. So we got x equals three, and then from this, the x-intercepts of that quadratic are gonna be 4.73 and 16.27, right? So what happens when we graph this polynomial? Well, first off, notice that it's an odd degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient. So that means the end behaviors are from what? from quadrant three to quadrant one. The y-intercept, if we plug in zero for all the x's, it's easiest to do it in um, this expanded form. The y-intercept's gonna be negative 924. You could also plug in zero for all the x's in the factored form, multiply all the brackets, you'll get negative 924. And then these x values, these x-intercepts we can label here, so we got 3, 4.73, and then 16.27. Okay, so the end behavior should be maybe like down here just to make this graph work. So the way this graph is gonna look is like that. 
right? So when is this polynomial greater than zero? Well, it's greater than zero in this interval here. So when x is between three and 4.73, and here, when x is greater than 16.27. So those are potential solutions to our original problem. But because we are dealing with a word problem and we're not just dealing with an abstract polynomial inequality, we gotta take these values that we got, these two solutions, and we have to test them. So what you wanna do is you wanna take these values here, three, 4.73, 16.27, and you wanna plug them back into the x values here and see if you get any negative dimensions because if you do get negative dimensions then those x values are not going to work for this word problem so if we take three plug them in for all the x's all the dimensions will be positive if we take in four uh, if we take 4.73 plug it in for all the x values all the dimensions will still be positive that means that all the x values between 3 and 4.73 are valid and then if we take 16.27, plug them into the x values here, the width would be negative and then the length would be negative as well. So this 16.2 or x values being greater than 16.27, that is not going to work, right? Because any x values greater than that number, it's gonna give us negative dimensions. So the answer to this question is this right here. So the x value or the dimensions of those corners that we cut out, right, from that original drawing that we had of the cardboard, the x values or the dimensions of those squares have to be in between three centimeters and 4.73 centimeters in order for the volume of this box to be greater than 924. If it's anything outside or the dimensions are anything outside of this interval, then the volume of the box is going to be less than 924, right? So these are the only possible solutions for those x values to be in between, and then that is your final answer.